Erie's Magnetics, world authority in advanced technology for magnetic, vibratory, and metal detection applications. This video will assist you in tuning Erie's B vibratory feeders, as well as offering several troubleshooting and maintenance tips. It is meant to supplement, not replace the instruction, operation, and maintenance manual provided with your feeder. All Erie's feeders are designed to provide years of dependable service. Over time, components wear and need replacement or adjustment. With occasional inspection and maintenance, you can ensure optimum performance. Never operate the unit if you hear a striking noise. If you hear this sound, immediately turn it off and proceed to setting the air gap before starting maintenance procedures. If the feeder behaves erratically or exhibits greatly reduced tray displacement, there are several things you should check. First, visually inspect the feeder for stray debris accumulations obstructing the tray or feeder housing. Then, inspect the tray for hairline cracks. Repair the cracks or replace the entire tray if necessary. See that the tray is not rubbing on chute work or other stationary objects. Be sure the feeder is operating at the proper voltage. Finally, check for broken internal front and or rear metallic leaf springs. If you suspect spring failure, remove, check, and replace the front and rear spring stacks, one stack at a time. Access to the front springs is gained by removing the tray, flexible diaphragm, and inner tray clamp, after which the springs can be removed. To remove the tray, remove the hex nuts and slide the tray off the tray mounting studs. To check springs for cracks, either drop them onto a cement floor to completely break them, or hold the spring with one finger in one of the end holes while tapping the spring with a hammer. If you hear a distinct chime, the spring is not cracked. However, if the tapping produces only a thud, the spring is cracked and should be replaced. Replace all springs and spacers with springs of equal thickness. Next, reinstall the springs. On models 70B through 105B only, temporarily hold the front springs and spacers in alignment. For all models, use 3 quarter 10 by 6 inch long studs or slotted head screws in the top holes of the armature and 1 8 by 6 inch long studs in the top holes of the body. After all springs and spacers are in place, the clamp blocks can be installed over the studs. These studs can be removed after the fasteners are inserted in the remaining holes. These studs are not required on 58B and 65B feeders. Replace the diaphragm. Rear springs are located at the back of the unit and are protected by the back cover. When assembling and installing spring stacks, keep the metal spacers and clamping surfaces absolutely dry and free from grease oil, or any other material which may act as a lubricant. Internal heating from lubricants can seriously damage the springs. Clamp blocks should be put on the same way they were removed to ensure smooth clamping surfaces and maximum clamping area. To hold the rear springs and spacers in alignment on models 70B through 105B, use 3 quarter 10 by 6 inch studs in the top holes of the armature and 1 8 by 8 inch studs in the top holes of the body. Follow the same installation procedure used to install the front springs. Tighten all spring bolts to the specified bolt torque as indicated in your feeder's instruction manual, or IOM. Thread engagement of all spring bolts must be at least one and a half times the bolt diameter. Before reinstalling the tray, exercise caution to ensure all spacers, sometimes referred to as tray clamp pads, are installed on all the tray mounting studs before the tray is reinstalled. Tuning your feeder will ensure maximum tray deflection at full voltage. Each Erie's feeder is tuned prior to shipment from the factory if purchased with an Erie's tray. If you are installing your own tray or modifying an existing tray, retuning is necessary. Measure tray displacement using a deflection sticker. Displacement stickers must be placed so that the center line of the V is parallel to the tuning springs. The unit should be operating at full voltage with an empty tray. Observe the intersection of the fine gray lines on the displacement sticker. Optimum displacement for models 62B and 65B feeders is 0.055 to 0.060 inches. 
For models 58B and 70B through 105B, the displacement is 0.065 to 0.070 inches. For model 115B, the displacement is 0.065 inches to 0.070 inches. To prevent damage, over displacement should not exceed 0.005 inches. If the displacement is out of station, you will need to tune the feeder. By varying combinations of standard springs, virtually any desired stiffness can be obtained. The number and thickness of the front spring stack is determined at the factory and should not be altered. To decrease tray displacement, increase the stiffness of the rear tuning spring stack by varying the number of springs or thickness of individual springs. If increasing or decreasing the spring system has the opposite effect on displacement, it means the weight of the tray is great enough to throw the tune point to the reverse side of the tuning curve. In this event, stiffness should be increased or the tray weight reduced until the behavior is such that additional spring stiffness decreases tray displacement. Only then can you properly tune the feeder. Replace the rear cover gasket and cover. The electrical assembly in your feeder may require replacement due to operation at overvoltage or normal aging. To do so, remove the bolts that secure the electrical assembly plate to the body casting. Loosen the jam nuts and adjust the Allen screws that position the electrical assembly plate. Lift the electrical assembly out of the body casting. If needed, use a sling passed through two eye bolts threaded into the tapped holes in the top electrical assembly plate. Check for dirt or other contamination and remove. To install the new electrical assembly, insert it into the body cavity. Be careful not to pinch your fingers. Be sure to position the power cord as originally installed. This is critical in a multiple drive feeder. Do not force the assembly into place. When properly aligned, the assembly will go in readily, although there will be a distinct pull exerted by the magnet. To overcome this, it may be necessary to slide the plate forward or rearward with a heavy screwdriver or drift punch while applying downward pressure to the top of the plate. Start the electrical assembly plate bolts into the casting and tighten completely to ensure the electrical assembly is tight against the body housing. Then loosen all bolts one quarter to one half turn to allow the electrical assembly to move while adjusting the air gap. Remove the nameplate and gasket from the side of the body casting. Working through the gap access port, use the aluminum air gap feeler gauge supplied with your feeder to check the air gaps between the E-frame legs and the armature pole pieces. These gaps should be uniform in width, parallel, and as alike as possible. If not, adjust the electrical assembly plate forward or rearward using the Allen set screws. After centering the air gap, tighten the electrical assembly plate bolts. Tighten all four Allen set screws and lock all four jam nuts. We appreciate your support and look forward to serving you for many years to come. If you experience difficulties during any of these procedures and need assistance, contact your local Erie's representative or the nearest manufacturing facility at the number listed in your instruction manual. Another service available only from Erie's.